Hi guys, Dan here with New Jersey Dog Training Center. We're going to do a quick video on the elementary part of a stationary heel position. Um, when I teach this, I like teaching it uh, through luring. Um, usually I do it with puppies at a young age. Um, we're going to do it with my boy uh, T-Bone here, a uh, nine month old boxer. He already has the concepts down pretty well. Um, and we're going to go through a couple different ways of uh, doing it. So, real quick, I have the dog's kibble, all right, in the pouch. Um, you could use a clicker. You could use your verbal commands or marker words. Uh, just make sure you're, you know, consistent in the meaning of those sound effects you're using um, to what you're trying to mark or the behavior that you like. So, uh, T-Bone, come. Good boy. All right, so I got T-bone here. Oh boy. So good means duration. I like that you came to me, you're with me, and I pay you for that, all right? Get it? Another marker word I use, meaning you're done doing your job, you're free to disconnect and go, do, and go do your job. Yes. All right, you saw that he already offered the behavior. I didn't even ask him to put his feet up there, which is a touch command. Yes. All right, I've taught him that when I take his, uh, his food, I put it in front of him, and I lure it in straight lines, and he learns to follow it. I can draw a straight line. Yes. All right, as soon as he touched it, I marked and rewarded. Um, with this, I have a dog that has a desire for the food, dog that knows how to lure and follow the food in straight lines. As I turn and move and manipulate the dog, he learns to follow my hand into different positions. Okay? Good. Now, good means stay in that job, and I will bring more food to you. All right? Good. I can move away and start adding distractions, distance, and duration, the three Ds of dog training. So, and the word yes means you're free to come and get the food out of my hand. Meaning your job is done, you're released from that job, come and get paid from my hand. The word get it is when I throw the food to the floor, he's free to come out of the position and go get it. So, I like starting this off with the dog in front of me, and I bring the dog and I say, heel, and I step back to my left leg with my hand, step forward with my left hand. Good. Good. Get it. And then I can release him. So I can say heel. He comes to me. I step forward. You can pay multiple times, meaning you can pay at the lure back to your left foot. And when you step back up, you can lure, pay him again. And then you can say, get it. And release him from the job. Now, if your dog has that, we can back chain what we've he's learned from touching the target pad of just lowering him straight up there to using the target pad to help give him a location where I want him to put his feet so he can learn the heel position a lot quicker and easier. So, you see he's standing up on the log, but I didn't give him a job to do. Um, let's see if my camera can move a little bit more for me. Well, guess not. So, adjust my camera a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So you see he's on a touch pad, right? But he's not in my heel position. Uh -uh. Heel. Nope. Heel. Good. So I commanded him. First time he didn't do it, I said, uh uh, you're you're wrong. Try again, try harder, try again. You can do this, all right? There's no reason to punish and correct your dog right off the bat. First, you gotta make sure the dog understands what they're supposed to be doing for you to add a punishment to it, all right? We're not correcting these dogs. We, got, we need to communicate to them and say, hey, try a little better, we'll help you out. Get it? Okay, and say, heal. This is more advanced, right? I didn't help him with any body language. I stood still, 
and I told him to heal. He came through uh, between the wall and my body. He spun around in a teal dro a tear drop shape. All right. He put his feet on the target touchpad. He got paid for it. Get it. Okay, now I will help him. I'll put food in my hand. Heal. Step back. Spin him around. Good heal, buddy. Good. Okay, let me move the big bag so you guys can see better. Good. Again, I'm paying him where I want him to be. So when I do this out without any touch pad, out on the walk, he's comfortable and he knows exactly where he needs to put his body. Get it? All right, I have three pieces of kibble in my hand. I say, heal. I step back. Good. Paycheck. Step forward. Good. Paycheck. Get it. And we can do multiple repetitions. Heel, the back, forward, paycheck. All right, get it. Heel. Good. Get it. All right, you see, no equipment on the dog. All right. If your dog's having difficulty staying in hand, you can put a flat collar on the dog. You can put a leash on him, all right, just to help give him that leash guidance if needed. Let me grab a leash for you guys right now. Good boy. So simple. I'm, I'm just going to even put the leash through the handle. I'm just gonna loop it over his head, all right? So, I say release, all right? I can put food in my hand and hold the leash, all right? I can put the leash between my fingertips. I have the food in my hand. I can say, heel. I can step back, leash pressure around, step forward, good, paycheck, all right? Get it? All right, have the leash. I can say heel, step back, leash guided, spin him around. Good. Hey, Chuck. Get it. Whenever you're gonna do this training and you're gonna do it in a new location, go back to Loring again. Practice elementary, then one or two tries. See how the dog is. If the dog's struggling, then good thing that you went back to the Lord. All right. Um, new environments really twist up the dog's brain. They get a little confused about it. Um, and what, once your dog is really rocking with it, you guys will understand that, hey, you know, there'll become a time that we can get a little bit better than this. All right. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use some remote collar communication. Okay. So, low level stem, just to communicate, hey, I want you to do this. So, dog is already knows how to do it, right? We don't teach through the remote collar. We teach behaviors beforehand with luring and marking, and then later when the dog is really good with the command and clearly understands it, we're gonna put a little bit more tactile information of the touching of the button. So, I get it, all right? I can tap the button, heel, step back, spin around, good. Get it. Heel. As long as the dog is trying to get up there, all right, I'm going to release that button. Get it. Sorry, I don't have a sound box up right now. All right, he already offered it. I didn't even touch the button. Good boy, good heel. All right, get it. Heel, button on, step back, forward. Good boy. You should not be seeing or noticing any difference with the dog with the e-collar on or the e-collars off, all right? So if we put the e-collar on, you should not notice the dog twitching or making any uh, you know, scratching that collar. He should be conditioned and comfortable with it. Get it? All right. 
the level of the remote collar should be just like a little fly landed on the dog. Now later on, when the dog gets really rocking really good, uh, yeah, you could go up and down with little levels here and there, depending on the environment and the distractions. Heel. Good. Now from here, you can go right into motion too. Heel. Good. 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 Get it. So, again, we start stationary, and then we get more movement into the picture, um, more advanced behaviors. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that video. If you had any questions, please comment below. Um, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.